Hi everyone, I'm Shane Stevenson, Curator and Director of Museum Collections here at the Buffalo Naval Park. Hope you enjoy this video. So I'm standing today on the navigation deck, uh, the bridge, and specifically the pilot house of USS The Sullivans. All right, our venerable uh, Fletcher class destroyer, BD-537. I'm gonna be talking a little bit about the instruments uh, in the pilot house, and I'm gonna be telling you a story of a famous sailor that you probably didn't know was the helmsman aboard USS the Sullivans. So we've got quartermaster uh, first class Woody here, uh, and he's gonna be helping me along. All right, so one of the things we mentioned about the Fletcher classes is that it went through a lot of uh, planning. They had about 10 different plans for Fletcher class before they finally decided on the, the actual plan of what they wanted the ship to look like, the weight, and when DD-445, USS Fletcher, first in class, was uh, constructed and commissioned, right, she had a round bridge. Did that for about the first 50 to 65 Fletcher classes, had a round bridge, uh, but they found once they got into the Pacific Ocean and the Pacific Theater that they weren't... Uh, it really didn't offer nice or good sight lines for Japanese attacking aircraft. For the USS Brownson, DD-518, was the first Fletcher class created with a square bridge. And that's what the USS the Sullivans has, is the square bridge. All right, so this allowed for better lookout, uh, better navigation um, in the Pacific Theater. All right, so some of the instruments that we'll show are, we have the four sound powered phones and the instrumentation attached with them. All right, so these would allow people on the bridge to communicate with various parts of the ship. We also have the telegraph. All right, if you've watched our comparison video between the engine room of USS The Sullivans and the USS New Jersey, you'll see that I point out the engine room telegraph. So this is the officers giving orders to the engine room about how fast, how slow, uh, forward, reverse, uh, that they wanted the ship uh, to attain. All right, what's pretty cool on here is it gives, there's a metallic stamp that lists the RPMs, the revolutions per minute, and the corresponding nottage. So if you wanted to go flank speed, that was considered 25 knots and above, you'd be going roughly about 258 uh, rotations per minute. Here's Quartermaster First Class Woody manning the helm. All right, and right beside him is the rudder indicator. All right, so this showed what position the rudder was currently in and the degrees of angle. All right, and that would show then the we have start we have starboard we have port and then the degree of the angle of the rudder. Also, if you've watched our video on USS Croker, uh, I talk a little bit about uh, the ship uh, alarms. All right, so I go into a little more detail than I will here today, but that gives a nice rundown on our Croker video of the control room. Uh, what each alarm did and what each alarm stood for. Obviously, one of the big differences is that USS The Sullivans doesn't have a dive alarm. All right, so behind me are the navigational, the navigational area of the pilot house. This is where bosun mates and quartermasters would uh, navigate and plot uh, the course on maps of the ship. And here is the binnacle. All right, so this was a magnetic compass that was free floating. So whether the ship was in rough seas or smooth, it would not have affected uh, this compass. And it is a magnetic north compass, so it always, uh, it always locates the magnetic north. These two iron spheres that you see, 
right, kind of compensate the magnetic declination, which happens when you're in a huge metal moving vessel. All right, so it, the without it, it would cause the magnet uh, to be thrown off a degree or two. So these uh, iron uh, these iron spheres would kind of compensate for the magnetic declination that you get because you're in a moving metal vessel. So I want to talk a little bit about someone on USS the Sullivans in World War II that manned the helm. Also a quartermaster first class like Woody, it is George Mendonza. All right, if you haven't heard of him, you've no doubt seen his photograph. So one of the jobs of a destroyer would be to pull up alongside ships that uh, had been kamikaze or were in distress, and you bring people on board. All right, so in May of 1945, off of Okinawa, the USS Bunker Hill, uh, aircraft carrier was kamikaze and they called for aid from USS the Sullivans. So George was manning the helm at the time and he pulled up alongside and he sees all this burning debris, uh, all this death and destruction uh, caused by the kamikaze. They loaded about 116 men from USS Bunker Hill on board to take them to the hospital ship, uh, the USS Repose. So as he's pulling away, he's seeing the burning deck. Uh, there's a lot of uh, fire and destruction. And he pulls up alongside the Repose and he sees all the nurses waiting to help his fellow sailors and to keep them alive, right? So this is a really indelible memory that he takes with him throughout the rest of the war. Now we should flash forward. That is in the rescue of the Bunker Hill men is May of 1945. Now we flash forward to August of 1945 and USS the Sullivans is back stateside uh, getting updated with some of her armament. All right, so they removed one of the uh, quintuple torpedo uh, torpedo tubes, which would be five uh, torpedo tubes. They added a three inch 50 all right, caliber gun. And so they were stateside when the war ended. And George Mendonza specifically was sitting in a movie theater with his girlfriend in Times Square. All right, so VJ Day happens. The Japanese officially surrender, though the surrender actually isn't signed until September 2nd. Obviously, New York City goes crazy. He runs out with his girlfriend. There's a lot of uh, partying going on, a lot of drinking. And George sees a woman dressed as a nurse. Now, I guess it didn't matter that she was actually a dental assistant. But that moment of seeing her in the jubilation takes him back to the USS Bunker Hill and seeing those nurses on the hospital ship USS Repose. And he grabs her and kisses her. And that photograph makes the cover of Life magazine and is one of the most famous photographs of the 20th century. So there's something that maybe you didn't know, that George Mendonza, otherwise known as the Kissing Sailor, served aboard USS the Sullivans. And he was a big man. All right, so they've done some facial recognition software and he's compared he had a cut in his eyebrow and they compared it with the photograph and the cut is in his eyebrow in the photograph as well. So it is pretty sure that George Mendonza was the kissing sailor just by the size of his, uh, his hands and the cut in his eyebrow that you can see in the photograph. 
One of the more interesting things, if that photograph isn't interesting enough in the story behind it, is the woman that George Mendonza married is actually just behind his shoulder in the photograph. So as he's bending down to kiss the woman, I believe her name was Greta, you can see a smiling face of a woman right at the shoulder and arm, the upper arm, and that is the woman that turned out to be his wife. Until they both passed away. They were married for over 50 years. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video here in the pilot house of USS The Sullivans. Remembering that she's a square bridge, not a round bridge. And all of the other instrumentation. Make sure you like this video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you very much.